If you guys didn't know, I launched a new YouTube channel. It is the Gal Toolkit Tutorials channel. We're posting tutorials, how to's, and creative tips on how to use our Gal Toolkit extension, which essentially is a panel in Premiere Pro that has over 1500 different effects. And it's the year anniversary since we launched the toolkit. So to celebrate, we're doing 20% off through the end of this week. So go get it. It's a lifetime purchase with free updates included. Also on Twitter and Instagram, I asked you to ask me anything. So we're doing a classic AMA. Dan Hens on Twitter wrote, what should editors include in their sizzle reel? Or are they not worth the effort? I think you should definitely try to put together a sizzle reel because I know if I'm hiring an editor, I don't necessarily wanna watch the full length video back to kind of see what editing styles, it would be great to show a little bit of your personality, maybe even do a voiceover and showcase a few of your different scenes and creatively put them together to show your skill set. I actually made a video rating video editing portfolios, which you should check out and I'll put a link up here so you can go see what makes a good video editing portfolio. Maxine Maximus asked, ¿Hablas español? No. Vanit on Instagram asked, do you edit videos all by yourself or use plugins and extensions? Of course, we edit videos by ourselves in the sense that without us, we wouldn't be able to complete the edit, but I've actually hired some editors to help me out. We actually use a variety of different extensions and plugins, of course, to help us. A great analogy is, it's very rare that you see somebody solve a math equation by themselves, you know, with pencil and a piece of paper these days. They usually have a calculator. So the same thing with editing, right? If there's a tool that can make our lives easier, we're definitely gonna use it. Of course, we use the Gal Toolkit. We use Firecut to help with animating captions. And one of my favorite new panels, because it makes it so easy to bring in stock footage in our timeline, is the Envato extension. I've been a partner of Envato for many years now. And with this new panel that they made, it just makes it so easy. If we need to bring in a stock video clip in Premiere Pro, we don't have to go to their website anymore. We can just search directly in the panel and we can just drag it in the timeline. So if you wanna try out elements, you need to get a subscription. And if it's your first time, you can actually get 70% off. I've dropped a link just down below. Trust me, you're going to wanna to try it out. It's really one of the most affordable options for unlimited stock footage and sound effects. And there's a lot more too that you can check out. There's graphics, fonts, you can explore their website. They've also integrated some new AI stuff. So great question, Vanit. Hopefully that answered it. Maxim8850 asked, where do you draw your information from? It's kind of complicated because it's not just one thing, right? I think what's interesting is some friends ask me like, you know, how do you stay creative? And the truth is, is like, I'm not really sitting down here at my desk being like, it's, it's creative, creative time. Cause that's just too forced. It's actually just living, bringing the things that you find interesting into your life and find ways to visualize them or find ways to help them in my case. Puget Systems on Twitter ask, what part of your work takes the most time? How do you make sure you don't get overwhelmed or burnt out? Very, very good question. You know how it is with creativity. Sometimes it's hard to put time constraints on it, but I think at the end of the day, openly communicating, setting boundaries for work time and play time is just really important. And sometimes when you grow and you have a lot of work, there's a lot of pressure on you. So just reminding yourself about why you started what you're doing can help ground you. And uh, I don't know, just give you a peace of mind that you're you're doing good. Krista Rosa on Instagram wrote, I imagine you don't have a lot of time for client work. Do you miss working that side of the industry? I never really was full on freelance client work. I did work as a full-time video producer with a bunch of clients in house, but I do feel like I get a little bit of client work in when I work with sponsors on the channel because they do have to review the content to make sure everything's correct. So I feel like I still get a taste of it, but full-blown client work, I don't really miss that much because I'm able to pretty much do the projects that I want and pick and choose here on the YouTube channel. So, you know, I would say it's ideal. And then to add to that, a ritual official asked how to get clients. So this is interesting too, because some people ask me, for example, with this YouTube channel, how do I get people coming in to work with us here on the channel to maybe feature a product or review a product? And when I was first starting out, I would just go to the company site and be like, hey, I love your tool. Can I you know, review your product for free in exchange for a free license? And that's how it started. And as we grew, I just made 
maintain that relationship and they started to see the value in me referring people to their product. So that's kind of how I built up my client base specific to Premier Gal. But if you're looking for editing work, do kind of the similar thing, like reach out, intern for a small company, you do a product, they like your work, they then refer you because we live in an industry of referrals, right? Like to find an editor, I was like, oh, I know this editor works for this creator. Maybe they're available. Can I reach out to them? I think everything kind of happens with relationships. In order to be recommended, I think the best way that you can secure a client is to show them that you're invested in the project. Ask questions, over communicate. I mean, don't communicate too much, but enough that shows them that you're just, you're there for them and they feel safe in your editing hands. Next is a long one from Myona. She said, is there any way for me to work as an editor to make good money in the YouTube industry? She can't escape the $200 per video client that requires 30 unpaid revisions. What I would suggest is setting a limit on how long those videos could be and maybe only allow for two rounds of revisions. And then if it's not a mistake that you made and it's some like stylistic change or something like that, charge like an additional $15 or $20 per revision after that. So that way you feel compensated. Also for my own editors, I do give bonuses if their edits are awesome. Hopefully that's useful to you, Iona. I know it's hard, but you will get there. And I recommend creating contracts too. Julie's asked, what are some good courses for an aspiring editor? I actually host workshops on Creator Now and workshops are great because you don't have to take like a full long course. You can kind of just jump in and get some good tidbits to get started. So even if you only watch like half of a course, that's great. Just go and take what you learned and see how you can apply it to your own workflow. I'm also working on an AI video course right now. You can join the wait list. I'll put a link just down below. Krista Rosa, what can you not learn about video editing on YouTube? Which I think is a very, very good question. One thing that's really difficult understand is kind of that sixth sense of editing that you get just from trial and error. Like, how do you know that that take is not good? Or how do you know it won't line up with that next shot? You have to go through the unfortunate mistakes to actually learn. And a lot of times you learn the most and you learn the sixth sense, not by watching, you know, YouTube tutorials, they can help get you started, but it's actually when you do your own projects, right? So if you guys like this AMA style, ask me anything type of video, we can do it more often on this channel. I think it's good to kind of connect in a different way and get to know you and the questions that you want and hopefully provide some answers. That's all for today's video. And as always, keep creating better video with Gal. See you next time. Bye. Woo!